Thank you, Lord. So, uh, the Pope, I, I, I got a little joke for you guys. You guys want to hear a joke? So the Pope, he, uh, he flew into New York City one time, and he, uh, he got picked up by the, uh, the, the limo guy, the limo driver. And the Pope had a little extra time that day, so he's like, man, I've always really wanted to drive a limo, but I've never really had a chance. You know, I always get driven around. So he's like, he's like he, talks, so he talks to the driver. He says, listen, do you think it'd be all right if I drive the limo today? He's like, sure, you're, you're boss. You're the boss, so whatever. So the Pope's driving the limo, and uh, he's cruising down the freeway. Well, he speeds a little bit. He gets pulled over. So the, the police officer comes to him and he says, wow, uh, you're speeding. He's kind of shocked he's to find the Pope. So he goes back to uh, call the dispatch officer and says, listen, I, I've got an I've got a issue here on my hands. I pulled somebody really important over and I'm not sure what to do. So his, uh, his uh, um, boss is saying, well, who, it is, who is it? Is it the governor? He's like, nope, not the governor. Somebody more important. Is it uh, a celebrity? He's like, nope, definitely more important than a celebrity. Is it the president? Nope, even more important than the president. He says, well, well who could it be? Who is it? And the, and the police officer says, well, all I know is the Pope's driving for him, so it must be God. <laughs> yeah. I love that joke. <clears throat> well, yeah, if you are here last night, we talked a little bit about joy and we talked a little bit about weapons of warfare, just believing more truth. And, and uh, I'm just going to kind of continue on that vein. I, I just have this passion for good beliefs because I believe that, um, you know, you can, anybody can have, you know, we can have encounters with God and you can shake on the floor and you can, uh, you can have just dynamic encounters with God. But, um, and I love that. Sign me up for that. But uh, um, I have a passion to see revival that never ends. And like, it's just sustained movement. And uh, any, any anointed person can blow up a meeting. Any person here, if you have Jesus in your heart, you have the anointed one, you can see miracles, you can see, you can see signs and wonders. It's, that's the normal Christian life. And, and we really believe that. And you might not be experiencing that right now, and, and, and that's, that's, that's okay in, in one sense. Like, you, you, we, can, we can grow in that. But it's normal. It's normal to be supernatural. That's what God, and he has for you. It's, it's not just for uh, BSSM students. Or, you know, it's for every Christian. There's no such thing as a second-class Christian. You're all first-class Christians. You know, whether it's in your workplace, whether it's in your school, he wants to use you. He wants to use you to touch the people around you. And, um, and so uh, we can all see those things. But, so any anointed person can blow up a meeting, but it takes an anointed leader to, to uh, sustain a movement or to, to, to have movement, something that you can build on, something that grows. And um, leadership, I believe, is all, all about your beliefs. A, and er, actually every person's a leader on the planet there are just some leaders that are better than others <laughs> there's, there's, there's leaders that aren't so good um, and there's leaders that are, that are good but every person in the whole world is leading at least one person I figured this out and uh, it, uh, you might not see anybody following you but you're wrong there's at least one person following you and that's you <laughs> you get to lead you. First and foremost, you get to lead you. You get to choose where you step, where you, what you think, what you say. You're leading yourself. And it's good to realize that, wow, I'm, I, I'm, I'm always leading me. 
like you're, you're not a victim of your circumstances or whatever. You get to make choices. And uh, David knew how to lead himself. He would talk to himself. He would talk to his soul. So he's probably having a bummer day, you know, and he's, he, you, can, you know, he, in the Psalms he says, you know, he's probably not feeling like worshiping the Lord. And what does he say? He says, bless the Lord, O my soul. He starts talking to himself. He starts leading himself into worship. And uh, so, I, so leadership is about like our beliefs. Um, a good leader is just somebody that believes more truth than somebody else because they're full of hope. And you can look this up in Hebrews in chapter five, but it talks about, um, um, it, t- it talks about um, being filled with hope. I'm just gonna read it real quick. Um, Hebrews chapter 5. Let's see here. Actually, it's 15. Whoops. I get those two mixed up sometimes. Hebrews chapter 15, or Romans chapter 15. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I haven't woken up quite yet, but Roman, Romans chapter 15, verse 13. Now, say now. May the God of hope fill you with all joy. Say all joy. joy. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing. So that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And just the the phrase I want to just bring out to you is that he says, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in what? In believing. So that you will abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so I, I really believe that the more we believe, the more truth we believe, the more hope we'll have. Yeah. It's a really good way to tell if you're believing truth is to look at how much hope there is in your life. And so um, people with a lot of hope have a lot of influence. Because, I don't know about you, but I like to f- follow people that have vision, that, have, that, that see something that I don't see. They see a better tomorrow. They see, they see something that they, they, they have hope. They have, they have a um, mindset. They're seeing God's perspective. Because God's the God of all hope. He's, just, he's, just, he's always got a solution. <laughs> he's not up there sweating about the national debt, you know. Oh my gosh, what are we going to do? <laughs> he's just got, he's got solutions. You know? And so, uh, so I, I want to, I want to believe more truth. I want to, I want to, I want to just be a truth addict. I want to be addicted to truth. I love the anointing. I love bl- those meetings where pe- bodies are flying everywhere and the anointing's just flowing. But it's, it's, how many of you guys know it's easy to believe when you're in the anointing? Yeah. It's easy. But well, what I'm looking at is Monday morning when I wake up and I'm like not really feeling it. You know what I'm saying? Wow, where did that warm, fuzzy feeling go? It was so easy to believe that last night in that revival meeting. But now, I've got to get up and go to work. <laughs> right? Anybody relate? That's my, that's my moment. That's when I'm like, okay, this is, this is my exciting moment to believe truth. Um, and to, uh, because that's, uh, that's, that's, that's an exciting moment. Um, of it's it's because uh, we don't live by our feelings, right? We live by faith. We walk by faith, and so that's an exciting moment to 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 do to practice our faith. I to, I call it my joy muscle. I just flex my joy muscle right now. Not really feeling like joy, right? I don't really feel the joy. I'm just gonna flex that thing. Shared last night about the laugh attack. Shared about you know getting excited in faith. 
I shared about the encouragement rampage. Those are all kind of tools for those kind of moments. You're not feeling it. Um, so, anyhow, I, I, have, I have this message, and I'm, I'm not sure how far, how many of these I'll get through, but I've got five revival fueling beliefs. Somebody say, hmm. <laughs> And uh, I'm just going to share them with you. And these are actually declarations as well. You can, you can take these beliefs and you can declare them. We talked about declarations last night and how it's important to renew our minds with truth. Because that's how we're transformed. We're, you know, uh, in Ephesians, Paul says, be transformed by uh, trying harder, right? Isn't that right? Is, it, is, it be, is that your right? You're, is, are you transformed by trying harder? By doing more stuff? No, that's all wrong. Scratch that. It's, I'm just joking. He says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's where we experience transformation. Is renewing our mind with truth. And so, these are all uh, beliefs that are going to fuel a life of revival, but also they're declarations. You can take these things and declare them. So, number one... You can say this with me. Everyone, Everyone is, longing is longing to know Jesus. Just say it again. Everyone is longing to know Jesus. This is a great belief. This is a great declaration. The more I believe this, I, I love to say this declaration before I go out in the streets to tell people about Jesus. Because sometimes religion will, uh, it turns into like a sales pitch. You know what I'm saying? You're trying to convince somebody um, that they need Jesus. But if I believe that actually they really long for him in their heart, it changes how I, my approach. No longer am I selling them something, I'm presenting them with a treasure. And it changes everything. Does that make sense? Um, you know, it talks about in Haggai 2.7 how, um, how Jesus is the desire of all nations. Every person is longing for him. You know, in Matthew 13, Jesus talks to his disciples um, about the Pharisees. And he's, he's talking to them and he's saying like how, you know, they have, they, have, uh, they, they have eyes but they don't see. And they have ears but they don't hear. And he says, because if they did, I would have to heal them. I would touch them. And, wh and what's the point? He's, he's saying, like, really, th if they could just see who I really am, they wouldn't be able to resist me. You know? If they, if they had ears to hear, really, what I'm saying, they, they, would, they would leave everything. They would leave that religion in a heartbeat. They just, their hearts were hard, right? So, but really, their hearts, that was their desire. Every person, no matter how hard, no matter how far away from God they are, they're longing to know him. Right? Amen. All right, so here's, a, here's another good one. Another, another revival fueling belief. Is anybody excited this morning? Yes. <laughs> you need to laugh just a little bit. Just take a little laugh break. <laughs> All right. So here's the second uh, revival fueling belief that I have. I'm sure there's a lot more, but these are five that I'm just going to share with you. Um, Say this with me. I hear God's voice. John 10, 27, it says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. You know, um, and this is something, actually, I had a word when we were just in worship, I, and, and this morning when I was thinking about this morning's service. I felt like God was going to set people free from, um, from, a, from um, legalism. And maybe, and, and I'm sure there's people that have already experienced freedom from that. This is a free place. Hello? But I just feel like God wants to give you even more upgrades in freedom from uh, religion. And when I say religion, it's religion, how I'm defining it, is uh, it's a form of godliness with no power. It's, it's, um, it's, it's rules without relationship. It's, it's, a, it's, it's just routine. And, it, and the thing about it, I've noticed about religion is religion's never in a good mood. A spirit of religion, one way it's, uh, 
when, when you can tell, one way you can spot a spirit of religion, it's never in a good mood. It never celebrates. It's, it's never good enough. You know, you pray for an hour. Should have prayed two hours. <laughs> You never measure up, right? Anybody know what I'm talking about here? You heard that voice? That, that accuse, the accuser that comes and, not good enough. If you were really holy, you would fast more. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I just felt like God was setting people free from that, just that, that thing, that nagging thing. And the thing is, is when you have that kind of perspective, when it's a, a f- um, conduct-focused Christianity, that's what I call it. I used to be a conduct-focused Christian. I was always focusing on what I was doing. I would read this book, trying to find something else to do, to add to my list. Oh, if I, if I do this, maybe that'll work. And, and there's a lot of good wisdom in here, and that's, it's not bad to read this to look for what to do, right? But it's, I found a better way to read this. Uh, now, I, when I read my Bible, I'm searching for something to believe. Because uh, what you do is important. What, what you believe is much, much more important. And what you, if you believe truth, you'll do things naturally. It'll come out of your heart. It'll be, it'll be natural. It'll flow from your heart if you believe truth. Um, if I really believe that everyone's longing to know Jesus, I will, I will approach them in a different way. Does that make sense? I'll do things that I wouldn't do if I wasn't sure. I'll, I don't want to inconvenience them, you know, those kind of things. I don't want to like, you know. I've got the best news. Just uh, do you have a minute. Listen, I heard that you don't know Jesus. This guy is amazing. You know, and, and people can smell it when you really believe it. You know what I'm saying? They can smell that conviction when you're, oh, this guy really believes this. And so, um, anyhow, all that to say, you know, on number two, I hear God's voice. I used to be a conduct-focused Christian. I'd read John 10, 27. I would read that, my sheep hear my voice. And, uh, I, because I was conduct focused, I would twist it into something I needed to do because I was always looking for something to do. So I say, oh, my sheep hear my voice. So that means, okay, I've got to work hard, really hard to hear his voice so I can be a sheep. <laughs> Isn't that ridiculous? But now that I'm a belief focused Christian, when I read that, it says, my sheep hear my voice. Oh, I'm a sheep. Does anybody believe in Jesus today? Repeat after me. Bah. <laughs> you're a sheep. Just turn to your neighbor and say, you're a sheep. So, he says, my sheep hear my voice. So that's not an invitation to do something so much. It's an invitation to believe something. I just need to believe. How are we saved? We're saved by grace through faith. Sometimes we, we get saved and think, oh, okay, we're saved now. We got to do stuff. <laughs> doing stuff, I'm not, I'm not against doing stuff. To don't hear my heart, but we can't do it, we can't do it backwards. We've got to believe the truth first. And then b- doing stuff should c- flow n- out of our heart. It should be, it should be easy it, it, in the sense. It's, his yoke is easy, um, and, it, and it flows out of our heart. So does that make sense? And so, um, so he, my sheep hear my voice. So he, he's inviting me. He's saying, you hear my voice. You're my sheep. Wow. Just meditate on that. I just want to believe that. And uh, it's pretty important because uh, God likes to speak to us. And 
He actually says, you know, in Matthew 4.4, 4, he says, Man shall not live on bread alone, but on every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And I just say this, the, the quality of our lives, our life, he says, we live by the word that comes out of his mouth. So the, the quality of your life is directly dependent on how well you can discern his voice. That's where our life comes from. So we need to believe that we hear him. He's a good father. Sometimes when I'm just having trouble hearing God, I'll just lay on my floor and I'll just make sheep noises. <laughs> you can try it at home. All right. Number three. Okay, we'll get through this here. How you guys doing? So, number three, um, just say this with me. Today is the best day yet. Just say it again. Today is the best day yet. We're talking about revival fueling beliefs. This is a... Uh, um, there's kind of a story behind this, but I'm just going to um, um, share the scripture. The Lord just uh, put this in my heart when I was in second year. And I was reading um, 2 Corinthians 3.18. It says, uh, Be, But we all, with unveiled faces, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed. Say being transformed. being transformed. We are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as from the Lord the Spirit. And that word, that, that phrase from glory to glory, it's uh, uh, one translation, the ESV, it translates it one degree of glory to the next. Or one degree of glory to another. Um, the NIV translates it like this ever increasing glory it's this connotation of it's like it's always it's always progressing it's always increasing and uh so we're being transformed and uh it's like we're reaching a closer proximity to the reality of heaven isn't that right Yerg? closer proximity to the reality of heaven and so um, I read that and I was like, wow. So that means that right now in this moment, I've never been more glorified than now. Regardless of how I feel, regardless of how I'm feeling today, I've, I'm at a new level of glory. All right? Isaiah 9, it says, of the increase of his government, there will be no, of his government and peace, there'll be no end. Increase. It's increasing. It's in us. It's just increasing. It, we don't go backwards. He's just he's taking us from glory to glory. So that means that today is your best day yet. Regardless of how you're feeling today. And I just started saying that every day. I would tell my roommates, guess what today is? <laughs> today is the best day yet. And I just started believing it. You know, I started having some pretty good days. It's really helped. Just believe in that. I'm, I'm, I'm walking into that reality. It's truth. Just say it one more time. Today is the best day yet. Today is the best day yet. All right. Let's do another one here. Let's say this out loud. Everywhere I go, Everywhere I go. people encounter Jesus. Hmm, where's that in the Bible? I've got a good one for you guys. 2 Corinthians 2.14. I love this one. I can always remember it because it's Valentine's Day. 2.14. 2 Corinthians 2.14. This is one of my favorite scriptures. It says, But thanks be to God, who always leads us in triumph, in Christ, and manifest through us the sweet aroma of the knowledge of him in every place. Whoa! 
Always. That's like every day, right? Every place. That's everywhere. Everywhere we go. So just say it again. Everywhere I go, people encounter Jesus. We're manifesting the, the, the knowledge of him everywhere we go. That's, that's a truth he's inviting us to believe. The more you believe that, the more you'll experience it. I had an experience in, uh, one time on a ministry trip. I shook a guy's hand, and he had an encounter with God. I didn't pray over him. I just shook his hand. And he, he saw, like, something, like, on my life. He saw, like, he said it called it a great spirit. It was, like, really bright. And he actually came to church that night. Uh, he was a Hindu guy. He was so blown away by it. I didn't do anything. I didn't pray for him. I just shook his hand. He felt like a spirit come on him. He said, ah, I like that. Was I working really hard? No, I was just, you know, Paul. Do you think Paul worked really hard when he was walking by people and just healing them with, their shadow, with his shadow? He was just spreading the aroma of the knowledge of him. People were encountering Jesus everywhere he went. And Paul believed this. God's just inviting us today, just believe that. Just, just declare it. And like I said last night, the harder it is to declare something that's true, the more you need to say it, the more you need to declare it. Because that, that, that blockage is a stronghold that's trying to keep us from believing that. Okay? So, one more. This is my favorite one. This is my favorite one. You guys want one more? All right. So, my, this final revival fueling belief for today. Um, haha, just laugh a little bit. <laughs> just say this, God is madly in love with me. If you get one truth today, get this one. I'm still growing in it. I believe it's a cornerstone truth. This is a Mac Daddy truth. If you get this one, it's like, it just, it, it's a cornerstone truth, I really believe. Uh, if you don't believe that God really, really loves you, you'll interpret scripture, to, you'll, you'll see it twisted, just like we see it, things twisted if you're conduct focused. This one is, this one's big. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, I did a little study once on, on King David and I realized the thing that set him apart from other kings the most is that he believed, uh, that, I, uh, that I see is that he believed God loved him. He believed that God was really good. He, he made a lot more mistakes than, than some of the kings in the Bible that, that we don't really know their names. But he believed that God is good and he loved him. And I just want to share this scripture, Psalm 38, or 33 verse 18. But the eyes of the Lord are on those who fear him. Hmm, fear him. What's that look like? In the NIV it says, on those who hope in his unfailing love. In the ASV it says, upon them that hope in his loving kindness. So what's it look like to fear him? It's, it's to put your hope in his goodness, that he is always good, that his love is unfailing. Psalm 147, verse 11, it says it like this. The Lord delights in those who fear him. 147, verse 11, Psalm. The Lord delights in those who fear him, who put their hope in his unfailing love or in his loving kindness. It, do you know that it delights God when you believe that he's radically good? You can't... I, 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 uh, this is what I'm waiting for. Like, you go to heaven, and God's just there. He's like, well, Levi, you know, I'm not quite as good as you thought I was. <laughs> That's ridiculous, right? We can't describe how good he is. I, you can't exaggerate God's goodness. I'm, I'm convinced. You, you just can't do it. can't exaggerate it. And it actually brings him delight for you to believe that he's good. That's actually fearing him. Because when you believe that he's so good, it's scary. The thought of being away from him is scary. It's scary. 
It's scary. It's this goodness that's the thought of being away from that goodness, that love. It's frightening. So just today, just, uh, we just release those beliefs and just believe that um, somebody got something today. It's going to change your life forever. And uh, yeah, come on. You can just say those things, write them down, put them on your mirror, declare them. And just say this with me. We're just going to close out the service. We're going to have a little uh, opportunity for ministry. If you need ministry, especially if you're here today, you have sickness in your body, we'd love to pray for you. Um, But just stand with me. Just say, if you receive the word today, just say, I receive the word. word. Just say this, God brought me here. Because he believes in me. me. More than I believe in me. me. He's got a great purpose for my life. My My mind is being renewed. renewed. With truth. truth. I am a hope-filled leader. leader. In every area I influence. influence. I'm I'm being transformed. Into the likeness of Christ. Christ. From one degree of glory to the next. next. Uh And today is the best day yet. yet. (laughs) Amen. Love you guys. Is that an awesome word? Levi has, has extended an invitation. I just want to bless everyone right now. If, if there's a need that you have, the team is making themselves available. If you guys want to just come up around the front, Levi, and, and you, you'll get prepared. If you need a fresh word spoken over your life, these guys have words of knowledge. They have word prophetic words. God uses them mightily if there's something that you have in your life that you need if 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 you need if you need a healing touch if you need to see if you if you need healing in your eyes if there's something that you need they've shared their testimonies this morning so you know the power that they carry so i just i just encourage you i invite you if you have a need in your life if there's something that you want just come on up here to the front and let them begin to minister over you. Let them speak peace. Let them speak the love of God and the kindness of God over you and the words that the Lord may have for you this morning. I just invite you and encourage you. But I bless you. I just pray God's blessing on everyone that has been here this morning. The words that you've received as you go forth, let that light shine through you. Remember that you are glory carriers. Let God use you this week to bless others. Heavenly Father, we just thank you this morning for all that you've done, for what's been accomplished here. We bless your mighty name, and we thank you, and we praise you. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. You are released to go. God bless you. We wait for you.